Hi again, uh, here's another uh, installment on the Phaser Saga, which everybody is totally having a great time with. Um, you know, in the last um, example, you know, we got the game running. I can click, I can collect the stars. We kind of debugged a little bit. We s set some physics properties, right? And what I'd like to do now is to add some effects and talk about, um, you know, how you might figure out how to do various things in Phaser. So um, what I did is I, I wanted to add, let me refresh this, right? I wanted to add some particles behind the, the logo here because I saw this demo over here. This is one of the phaser demos, and I thought, wow, that's pretty cool looking. I want to put that in my game, right? So when I go back here, let me show you where I found this. I'm going to go back all the way to the top. And what I did is I was, you know, looking through the demos here, and I found game objects. And then I scrolled through the game objects and I found particle emitter. And here are a bunch of demos for particle emitter. Um, I actually like this one to creating an emitter from config. And this one kind of has these colored particles. I actually like this one better, but uh, the one I'm going to demo is this one right here. So uh, you know, I found this one first. I'm gonna, I might do the colored one later, but uh, you know, I clicked on the edit button here, and then I have a, a sample, some sample code here, and it's running over here, and I can see what it does. And what I need to do now is I need to translate this sample code into my project. Okay. So a couple things here. Um, the particles are made out of a bunch of images, okay? So you, or, or actually just a single image, though I think you can specify more than one if you want, okay? So, so really what this is, it's hard to tell there, but do you see like when one of these gets out to about here, those little circles right there? That's the image. So really it's just a whole bunch of these things all kind of globbed together and they're all animating at different speeds, right? And in different directions. And, uh, and that's what makes up the effect. And the reason it looks kind of globular like this is because of the, um, the graphics mode that's used to, to draw the pixels onto the screen, the way it's blended with the other pixels. And there's a couple modes you can choose from, right? And they're using the add mode. So when you use add, essentially like um, all the pixels add together so the color gets brighter. Right? That's why the color kind of gets from like this light blue to white, right? So when you combine a whole bunch of these guys and they all stack up, they kind of add up until the color just gets brighter and brighter. If you're familiar with Photoshop, Photoshop has add mode in it, and a lot of graphics programs have that, and, and Phaser uses it, and JavaScript uses it with Canvas. So anyway, so how are we going to do this? Well, um, let's read through the code here. They've got preload. They're going to preload their image, so we need an image to work with. Um, then in the create function, they're going to add a particle with the image that they loaded, create a particle emitter, and then set the position of the emitter, set the speed of the emitter, and then set the blend mode of the emitter. Okay, let's give it a try. So I'm going to go look at my code here, and I want to put this in the preload scene. So the first thing I'm going to do is preload an image. Um, you know what I think I'm going to do is, for right now, I'm going to use just one of the images that I already have in my folder, and then I'll, I'll swap it out for another image in a minute. So I'm going to call this guy uh, Particle, and uh, I want to go to the Assets folder, and maybe I'll just load up uh, the bomb. Bomb.png right and um, and then let me make this a little wider and then what we need to do is in the create method here now ours looks a little different right because we're writing classes and we're doing the ES6 style but essentially this is the same thing so now what I want to do is I want to say um, I need a variable too so I'm going to make a const and maybe if my class needs to access this emitter and we can do that something with that later I could make it a class property but um, I don't need that right at the moment so I'm just going to make it a local variable okay so I'll declare it with const I'll say they used var here but I'm going to use const because I'm not going to reassign it so I'll say how about um, p for particle equals this dot add uh, what is it particles right and then I'll say the name of my image. So this is the name 
right here, you know, from, from the image. And then we'll need to um, make an emitter. So I'll say E for emitter equals um, particles or actually I just use P, so I'm going to do P. They, they, they wrote out particles here, so this is their variable. I just use P in that place, and then I'll do create emitter. Right, and then I think we're done. And now we just need to position the emitter on the screen. Actually, let's give it a try here. What if I save that and then take a look here? What does it look like? Oh, it doesn't work yet. So I guess we gotta we gotta set some more options there. Let's see. So um, we'll say e dot set position four hundred and three hundred. So that should be the same size because our screen is like the logo's at four hundred three hundred. So I'll put this right on right in the center with the logo, and then we'll say e dot set speed to 200. I think this is like how many particles are emitted over a certain time period, right? Let's see if that got any particles. Oh, so there's my bomb particles are showing up. So you can see all the bombs just start in the center and then they just kind of fly outward, right? So that actually doesn't even look too bad right, right like that. Um, let's see what the blend mode does. So the last property that they used for this effect was this blend mode. So I'm going to say E dot set blend mode and I want to get it from phaser dot blend modes dot add and there's a, probably a list of blend modes we could look it up there's probably a demo over here on this site for you know the blend modes right um, it's gonna say phaser is not defined so what we should do is we should import phaser at the top and that'll fix that error so now javascript knows where this variable is coming from let's see what it looks like oh hey there's our bombs there now that doesn't look too exciting how can we make this look even better uh you know what i did was i got out sketch here and i made a little particle i colored this one red um really i think i might want to make it white or some other color maybe not red let's do this um I actually drew a, a, a rectangle and I filled it with a, um, a radial gradient, right? So I used this radial gradient and then the center color I set to whatever color. Let me pick a color here. Um, so I kind of like that blue that they had in the demo. So let's try and imitate that. And then the, the outer color, so this is the inner color this is the outer color and the outer color I'm gonna set to a similar shade of blue but I'm gonna grab the transparency slider and make it um, make it transparent right so it fades off so I'll save that actually I don't even need to save it I'm gonna click it and click export rectangle I'll save it to my folder here maybe I'll call it um, particle.png right and I'll save it to my assets folder. And now I have um, I have this particle PNG. So I'm going to use that instead of the bomb, right? Uh, Particle.png. Oh, so now I'm getting some kind of good particles. Looks a little closer to what they had. Um, now I have a problem where I really want the um, the particles to be behind the logo. Now we might be able to do that by just importing the logo or adding the logo I mean and create after the particles. Right? Oh and that actually kind of worked but um, I had actually been playing with this earlier and looking up some more stuff in the, the demo site here and what I found was um, was over here under um, where was it um, oh you know what it's back up here um, depth sorting right like that's an important feature of games and it, when I went in here I kind of they had a bunch of dem a bunch of demos that were kind of weird these are like much more complicated maybe I'm not really doing any 3d stuff but if I looked at the just the plain old z index 
example and I went to the code here, you can see they set the depth of the image with the set depth method, right? And I guess you just give it a number, higher numbers are in front, lower numbers are in the back. So if we started with this example here and we added the image first, and then we created the particles, we could afterwards, we could say, you know, actually we could even just put it up here with the, with the image, right? We could say, um, actually, you know what I'll need is I'll need a reference to this image, right? So let's make a const, call it logo. And then we can say logo.set depth. And uh, you can give it any depth. So I'm assuming that all these guys just kind of have a default depth of zero. And so then they're just stacked wherever they are when they're created. But if I give this guy a depth of anything, it will probably be in front of the particle. So I'll just put 99 on there. Oh, and there we go. Hey, that's looking a lot better, right? So that's kind of a, a, a nice, cool effect to add to the game. Maybe I could play with these colors on this thing a little bit to get get the particles to look a little more interesting, right? And actually, if you look up the particle... Um, the particle thing here let me go back to that right um let me go game objects uh, particle emitter i think if you go to this one create emitter from config it shows you a bunch of options that you can use to create the particle so yeah when you create the emitter you can um, say what frame to use. You can say where the particle X and Y is. You can give it a speed. You can give it a lifespan. And there's probably a bunch of other properties. You probably have to look them up in the docs. But anyway, hopefully that's useful to someone. Um, you can also use these particles to, um, you know, like in the game, like when a character jumps or when they grab a star, you could have some particles, you know, emit there. Um, and maybe I'll do that in an upcoming video. So anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope that that's um, helpful.